Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today, I'm updating my camera system. No, not the camcorder that I'm using to film this. That is still secondhand from a viewer and mostly works, kind of, most of the time. I actually mean I'm upgrading my security cameras around my house. Now, I have a network video recorder and HD security cameras already, but they're a few years old and the system is kind of patched together. And even HD cameras, when it comes time to actually look at the footage to figure out uh, some kind of incident, uh, as I like to say at work, the best I can tell is that a blob pulled up in a blob, stole some blobs, and escaped in a getaway blob. You can't really tell anything. You give the footage to the cops, they just laugh it off and throw it away, and nothing ever comes of it. So, I went ahead and blew a bunch of money on a 12 megapixel camera system. This is beyond 4K, well beyond HD. This is... I think at the moment, top of the line for consumer security camera products. So what I got is the Reolink 16 channel system with eight of these 12 megapixel cameras. And this might look like a review video, but I actually spent my own money on this thing. I spent almost $1,000 on this set and that was with Black Friday savings. So I'm hoping it's a good one. I like Reolink, I've used their products before and oddly enough, they did contact me and want me to review some of their stuff, but uh, their process was really a hassle. Most Amazon sellers, even the big ones like Viver, they'll just contact me, they'll say, we've got this gadget, you want to review it? I say yes, I give them my address, the thing shows up in the mail. Nobody ever wants paperwork, nobody wants me to sign anything. Reolink did want me to jump through some hoops, they did want me to fill out some paperwork, they made it really difficult to review their products, so I just didn't bother getting a free product to review, I bought one instead. Alright, we've got our main NVR unit. We have some basic cables, mounting brackets and whatnot. And it looks like they've actually included some network cables. That's nice. I've got network cables, but it never hurts to have more. So these are the cameras that I got. So this is a Reolink uh, D1200. I think it has a microphone and speaker on here so you can yell at criminals in your yard or yell at raccoons to get out of your trash. It's got power over ethernet. So theoretically, we only need one of these cables and we can run these over a single wire. This sure makes for a lot of packing material, which is great if you have cats. I love all the empty boxes. As I said, this is a 16 channel um, network unit. So it's got 16 network ports on the back here and then one more LAN port. So this could be its own separate network with just the cameras and then cross connected over to our regular network. And in fact, that's how I have my old NVR set up. All the cameras are on their own network, their own subnet, just run through the NVR. And that way I can have some wireless bridges out to remote wireless cameras and whatnot. Well, it never fails that as soon as I get rid of anything, I need it again. I was just looking for a monitor and I remembered that I gave away most of my extra VJ monitors to FreeGeek. I do have a couple more, but they're all jammed in here like Tetris underneath my server rack. So I'm going to have to do some excavation there to get any monitors out. This is kind of the extra, extra computer graveyard. Okay, so right out of the box, the VGA output does not work on this. I've tried two different monitors now. That's frustrating. That means I have to go dig around even more downstairs and find something with this DVI output. So yeah, can't use either of the monitors that I actually wanted to use with this. So the only spare HDMI monitor I have is actually this little uh, projector with an HDMI port. So I have to say pretty disappointed in Reolink already. Uh, for almost a thousand dollars you'd think this would have a working video output that I could use. And there's no actual manual for this thing. There's like a quick start guide that says plug it in and go. There's a manual for installing the cameras. Um, yeah, if this was a review, I'd be giving this thing kind of low score already. All right, I finally got some video out of the Reolink NVR. It's just in a really stupid and inconvenient way with this whole projector. So I guess now that I blew a bunch of money on the NVR, I have to go buy a more modern monitor to use with it. Or I could just try to use it headless uh, over the network, but I need to be able to get into it initially to set things up, and that's why we've got our projector running here so we can set up things like the IP address, the passwords, all the basic stuff to get started. When you go to set the time, when you click on the up arrow, it goes down. You click on the down arrow, it goes up. Again, not a big deal, just mildly annoying. It's it's one of those things that means they let the programmers run loose. Nobody did any testing. Nobody did any user experience or verification on this, and they don't care about their users. Um, not a good sign so far. 
Okay, we've got the basic setup here. We have one camera connected, and that does seem to be working. I've also added it to the Reolink app, so hopefully now that it's on the network, I can control it from that app and I can put away the projector. I don't need a local monitor anymore. I've uh, kind of wasted my nice warm weather and it's now pretty much fully winter. It's snowing, so this seems like a good time to climb up on the roof and install some cameras, right? So the ones I'm replacing are these, they're one of screw, these Hikvision domes, which um, a friend of mine hooked me up with, and I appreciate it. They're great for commercial use, but they're really annoying for home use. They use special fasteners. You gotta take the entire thing apart to mount and unmount it and expose all the electronics to the weather. Uh, it's multiple pieces to get up there. You have to get this off, and then you have to get that little bracket off. Uh, you kinda need three hands, plus holding onto the ladder. So these just really aren't appropriate for the single home user like me. If we had a whole team installing them at a commercial property, they're great, but yeah, around here, I'm ditching these. They're also the lower resolution. These are the HD. I'm going with that uh, 12 megapixel. So these are uh, going on to the surplus pile. These little guys are really easy to install. You just get that bracket mounted on there and then you just twist the whole thing on. Uh, running into a problem, removing this old enclosure from the wall. Um, Turns out it's not very waterproof and there's a ton of moisture inside this enclosure and all the screws got really rusty and then there's actually ice inside some of them. So I am having to thaw out the screws so that I can force the rusty screws out and get this old rotten enclosure off of here. This particular camera happens to be right next to the catio. So Mr. Donnie is here assisting. As I'm swapping out these old cameras, I'm finding all kinds of interesting things I did in the past. Like, whatever this abomination is, I think this was a way to break out power over ethernet into ethernet and power. Um, not really sure what I was thinking there. It, it was working. And you can tell by the multiple layers of mounting rings here that these were not my first cameras either. So yeah, I just keep upgrading these every five years or so. So here in the garage, I've got my uh, remote network set up on that wireless repeater. And then I'm running another power over ethernet hub in here, running all my cameras off that. It's always fun to work up in the near the ceiling of the garage here because there's all these cracks and crevices and every now and then, uh, something's little face looks out at me. You get little mousy noses sticking out of these crevices. Now all these new cameras here aren't just about increased security for my house. With 12 megapixel resolution and pretty much full coverage of my yard, uh, I can be almost guaranteed to catch myself doing something stupid. So if I set something on fire or fall off a ladder, if I don't happen to get it on my main camera, it might still show up in a future video if I catch it on the security cameras. All right, so I've got my fantastic wiring job done in the garage. I just gotta add a UPS to that. And then we'll have the wireless link and the PoE hub on a UPS. Then our cameras will just keep running all the time. And I've got a couple other random PoE cameras as well. Something slightly odd with these cameras, I configured this one earlier in the house uh, to not have the spotlight turn on. So you can have these, uh, have a motion sensor light when somebody walks in front of it, when a car drives in front of it, the light can pop on. I don't really want that, I think it's annoying, so I set up most of my cameras to disable that. These other cameras on the corner, I hooked up over the wireless bridge, and they still have that spotlight mode on. And that mode is actually disabled in the settings, so I'm not able to go in and turn these off over the wireless bridge network. I okay, so after I said that, and after I tried logging in locally here uh, to the switch and changing those camera settings. I couldn't get to it locally here, but then it let me change those settings from back in the house. So it suddenly decided that it had all the settings for the lights, for the watermark, et cetera, that were missing before. I don't quite understand it, but hey, at least it's working now. And here's what the cameras look like with the spotlight color mode at night versus uh, just the regular old infrared mode. And here's what that looks like comparatively with an older camera from the same spot. I think the real links are already quite a bit better at seeing people's faces. So we've got all eight cameras hooked up. I do still need to re-aim some of these. I'm not happy with how they're looking and what they see. So we're gonna change the orientation of some of these, tweak them around, 
uh, try to balance the amount of yard they see with how much overlap. So there are some things that would be nice to film from multiple angles, like the front and back door, but there's other areas that I don't necessarily need multiple cameras covering. I've been comparing these cameras to some screenshots I took of uh, prior incidents with my old cameras. For example, here's one from a year or two ago that we like to call Old Man Hates Bushes. I don't know what this guy's deal was, but he wandered down the sidewalk attacking the shrubberies for quite a while. Here's what the front walk looks like with the new cameras. Definitely higher resolution. I also checked on some prior incidents when we had people snooping around in the alley, stuff disappeared from some of the neighbors. Uh, the old cameras didn't get faces very well. This new camera system does seem to get faces pretty decently. I actually like the infrared mode more than the spotlight full color night mode, so I think I'm going to keep that spotlight turned off for most of these cameras because it seems like it just washes things out and it's going to get kind of annoying if that lights up in the face of every car driving down the alley at night. These new cameras also seem to get license plates pretty well, which is very nice. Well, so far I'm really happy with the Reolink uh, 12 megapixel cameras. They are much higher quality than what I had. The software, the user interface is super intuitive. It is really easy to use. It is really easy to get video off of that system to view it, play it back. A lot of these camera interfaces are just confusing messes of options and little uh, details you have to click and you have to go through 30 different steps to get a piece of video out. This thing, very easy to use. Uh, even for an imported system, the software makes a lot of sense and I really like it. And yeah, I really like the cameras. In fact, I like them so much I went out and bought another camera for almost $100. Again, this was not a sponsored review or anything. I bought all this with my own money. Reolink tried to send me stuff to review and I just didn't want to deal with their process, so it was much easier to just buy the stuff on Amazon. Anyway, we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.